How to fix fucked knees. So from our polls that we put out into the group, we understand that one of the biggest constraints for us getting to our goal was previous injuries. And the previous injury that got the most votes was to do with knee pain. So we're going to go straight for the jugular and by the end of this video, get you some fixed set of knees so you can continue to pursue your goals. So if this is the first time listening to me, my name is Tom Sergi. I used to be a former British paratrooper and also served in the PT Corps. Now, for about two-thirds of my army career, which was ten and a half years, I was a PTI. So, for the longest of time, I've spent doubling up and down hilly terrain with a Bergen on my back. And I actually never had any, well, no knee pain, let alone any other injuries in the whole time of serving. And I put that down to the training that I'd done in the background to allow me to have that robustness. And that's what we're going to deliver to you in this video. Now... I am a human being. When I descend down mountains, I you know when you like roll over your ankle and you're like, whoa, that was a close one. I, I do that multiple times. Multiple times I thought, how the fuck's that ankle not, not caved in? But I honestly just believe it's because I'm strong in my connective tissue. I'm strong in my joints. There's been times where I've been descending down a mountain and you know like it's harsh on the knees. You've all been down mountains before. And the robustness in the knee, even when it's slippy, has allowed me not to fucking... It a topple over and b like cave in the joint. So I'm very proud of, especially after two and a half years at ITC Catrick, knocking out what 40, 50 miles a week. I literally left there with no knee pain, and and that was a, that was a big win because that was that was the only concern I had going and doing that job. One of the best jobs throughout my career. But the concern was, am I going to leave with fucking toasted knees and, and bad ankles? And lo and behold, I I never did. So take it from me that. I know how to look after my joints and connective tissue. I'm going to pass down that information to you in this video. So my promise to you is by the end of this video, you'll know how to train to fix your current knee pain and then keep that joint pain-free for ideally the rest of eternity until you go grow so old and withered that you can't do any uh, fitness anyway. So we're in this video, we're going to cover how did they get so fucked in the first place? The limited beliefs on why you think they can't be fixed, the formula for fixing any form of joint pain, and then specifically how to fix the knee joint. We're going to go through exercises, uh, how to load it, different types of exercises, the frequency, how often, and how much you should train it to get from fucked to back to fixed and moving well. So let's dive in and let's go. So how did they get so fucked in the first place? Well, for the majority of people, they started off with weak-ish legs and therefore joints joints and connective tissue connective tissue is a fancy way of saying the muscles around the joint uh, the tendons the, which connect the muscles to the bones the ligaments which connect bone to bone and then you've also got like the fascia like in the knee you've got the meniscus so for the majority of people and I've seen this in like multiple recruits when they join ITC they're generally just weak in their legs. They've not done any resistance or load-bearing exercises on the knees. So they're, they're quite weak. Now, what happens when you load a weak joint? It's, it's obviously going to buckle eventually, isn't it? So along with that, it, you can also load it and lift with poor technique. Here's an example. When people leg press, their knees come inwards. The knee joint is a hinge joint, like your door frame. It only moves in one way. It can't like curl up or pivot around the other side like we see here. And that's how you're going to get injured. So it's either poor technique through lifting in the gym or with loaded, i.e. put a Bergen on, or even like even your distance running, you are technically loading the joint because you're moving at speed and therefore more weight is going through the joint at a greater force for a continuous time. So you're loading the joint. Obviously, we're, we're, lo we're actually loading it with excess burger weight. So you take a weak joint and you load it and then you times that by duration. So your times in weak loaded joint, of course it's going to be fucked. Of course it's going to be absolutely fucked. That's like taking a, a weak or a, uh, not weak, a, like an old fucked car, sticking a load of kit in it, sticking your full like life in it and trying to drive it 10 hours across like from the top of the UK down to the bottom. Of course, it's going to break down. It's literally the inevitable. And this is why so many recruits get injured and we have like a fair amount of wastage. And uh, people will like blame them, just think, oh, I'll be all right. We'll, we'll be able to get through it. And like, I love the mentality, but the reality is if you don't fix the joint, like it's going to be fucked. And then what happens, and here's a side note, once it is fucked, you, you then don't want to touch this. 
You don't want to touch the weights because you think, well, I can't put weight through it because the joint is, it, it's fucked itself. How can I lift excess load? That's probably what got it injured in the first place. I need to rest it. I need stretching. You don't need fucking stretching. I can tell you that for free. Foam rolling, any of this pish, you need to strengthen the joint that is weak. And in the first place, before you do any form of running or distance or anything like that, you need to be strong in the first place. Luckily for me, I'd been lifting. So let's say I was... 17 when I joined Paris Depot, 16 when I went to Harrogate. But for two years before that, I'd been lifting in the gym. So I had strong joints. I was robust enough to take the impact that was coming on. So that is, that's how people get fuck knees. Outside of like freak accidents or like the odd... But then even like like going down a mountain and you slip and you, you tear something. Or in a, in a football game, a lot of people do their ACL. Generally speaking, if that joint was stronger, it would have a, a better chance. Now, of course, there, there is occasions, and I'm not saying, it, oh, you, ju- you must be weak if you fuck your knees. No, I can't say that for ev- everything, but I can say for the majority of cases, it was because the, the knee was weak, the muscles around it were weak, and were not able to support the load that you were doing, and then when you added duration, it just got fucked. So that's how we got there in the first place. So now we need to reverse our way back from there to fix it. Now, you may have limiting beliefs on why this can't be fixed. Most of the time, it's because the med center literally says it in black and white. The amount of chits I've read that says, no load-bearing exercises because the knee's fucked. In the very, very beginning, like immediately after doing the injury, maybe because inflammation will be high, but inflammation's not fucking high forever. So that, that, that's one of the biggest myths. You, you need to load-bear that, ex, that joint and actually get it back to strong again, or it, it won't get strong. You'll find that if you rest something for long enough, the, the overall pain will come down slightly, just enough to where you think, well, shall I try it again? And then pff, you go again. It's like, oh, no, it's still fucked. Yeah, of course it is, because you've rested it fine. If you've not done anything to fix or strengthen it, it's got no reason to have got better. And then, obviously, the, the main belief, limited belief is we think, well, I can't go in the gym, I can't lift weights, because what well, the med center told me to, but also, like, I don't want to put stress through the joint and, and make it worse. And, and weirdly enough, and it does sound counterintuitive, have a fuck joint, go and lift resistance. Of course, that, that sounds very counterintuitive. Most things in life are, want to attract the girl? <laughs> don't chase after the girl, she'll come to you. Counterintuitive. Most good, the, most good advice is quite counterintuitive. So all I would ask it for you when you go into this video, just have an open mind. So the next thing we'll discuss then, the formula for fixing any joint. So any joint that you have that is toast, this is the way to go about it. So the joint is fucked and it's weak. And you would be right in saying when you press, it hurts. You'd be absolutely, you have my blessing and I agree with you, it will hurt when you concentrically, which is shortening of the muscle, it's Think of a squat, you're at the bottom and you come back up, that's the concentric phase of the repetition. Think on a leg extension when you're at the bottom and you contract the muscle, that is the concentric phase, that's the muscle shortening, that will give you pain. That will give you pain when you do that, I I fully agree with you. However, there are ways around this. So, the first thing we want to do to a weak joint is train it with isometric holds. An isometric hold basically means we put tension on the muscle and the joint, but we don't change the length. It doesn't move, it's static, it's a static hold. If you think of like a plank, that is an isometric hold for your abs. Now we wanna replicate that for your joints, and you're already probably getting some ideas as I say this, and we're gonna show you some specific exercises to do that. Once we have got stronger at the ability to hold statically load on the joint, so we've not allowed it to move because moving will aggravate it, concentrically contracting it will aggravate the joint. Once we've got stronger at that point, just from holding it still, we're then going to go into what's known as eccentric loading. Eccentric loading, for simple terms, is basically the way down of any form of exercise. So going back to a squat, it'd be where you're stood up straight and you go down to the bottom. That's the eccentric portion of the rep. That is the next place that we can work at that will not cause you pain. So again, if it's the le- if it's the knee joint we want to work, we want to think, well, what exercises can we do where we can lower it without pain? And, and that's what we're going to then focus on. Now, once we've got these two ducks in a row and, and these are in check and we've built some good strength through here, you will then be able to try concentric. Now, 
the beauty of legs is you have two of them. So you will be able to lift the load with both legs to like, so you're not just taking the brunt with the used to be fucked knee, okay? You're trying it with both legs through the concentric now. So you're still building strength through the concentric, but you've stacked a lot of strength up through the isometric and the eccentric portion on, on the previously fucked knee. And now after we've done this, we can then go through full range of motion of all movements. And the beauty of taking something through a full range of motion, let's say your joint of your knee can go, well, it'll go from straight, obviously, and then as far back as it could go would be where your calf and your hamstring can touch. That would be the full range of motion. Now, for us to be healthy and fit, we want to be able to take load through that full range. And at that point there, you, you have no real reason to get injure, injured despite like a, a brutal immediate impact injury. If you can do that and you can strengthen the muscle and the connective tissue through the full range of motion, you will, you will literally be bomb proof. I'm not sure if any of you have heard of the, the knees over toes guy who like, you know, really, uh, well, it does what it says on the tin, trains where his knee will come over his toe. People used to think it's bad. It, it's not bad at all. It's, it's very, very healthy to do for the joint. And if you can get to that point, you, you'll be able to go up and down mountains with your families all day long and literally no risk of any pain, any knee injury, which as, as you get older and older will definitely serve you. It will serve you to have strongest fuck joints because we've all seen what happened to our grandparents. They have bad hips, they fall, they fucking smash it and then life's just really hard. So we don't want that to happen. So now we're going to go into the specifics that you can take away from this video, apply to your own training uh, so we can get that joint actually fixed. So there are two exercises that we're going to use to show you today that you can do in your gym. And I guarantee your gym has these two bits of kit. It's the leg extension and also a horizontal leg press. Like the old school leg press that you see like pregnant women using basically. They're the two bits of kit that we're going to use. For the purpose of all of the videos, the left knee is the fucked knee. Okay, just bear that in mind when we go through. So remember what we spoke about. We want to do isometric holds first. Now, if we've got a fucked knee on our left knee, it'd be smart that we actually raise up with our right knee. Then our left leg comes in to take the load. I'm going to hold it statically for around about 10 seconds. Allow that concentrate, hold through the joint. And obviously that will put tension on the joint, but you're not stretching and shortening it. And then you're going to lower it back down. Now, that may be too intense. So you can either lighten the load or just but the, the actual... So this exercise is hardest when it's in this position. So what we can do is just you know reduce the range. Bring it down here. It will be much easier to hold at that angle versus bone straight at the top. So that's another th tool you can use. You've got load that we can play with. We've got range of motion that we can play with. And again, ju just keep going through. Find the range that you can work with. Or when you're doing your sets, you could do one set, full range. Next set, less range. And keep repeating all the way down. In fact, if you've ever done like, like bodybuilding style training, when, when you're finishing off the set, you just go as high as you can. Keep the tension, lose the range. Go again, come all the way down. As high as you can, lose the tension, keep the range. And keep going that until you've just completely toasted the muscle. See here how we've got it right towards the bottom. So you can rinse and repeat that out for the longest of time. And when, once you've built confidence, then we can move on to eccentric loading. This is where we slowly lower the weight back down to the top. We use our strong leg to get us back. We take the, the load down with the weaker leg and we spend a good five seconds coming down. Do not rush this process or it will not, you will not get the juice out of the squeeze, okay? Minimum five seconds, especially because we're using this to strengthen up the joint. So this is where all your money is gonna be made. For this, you're looking two to three sets of around about uh, eight reps. Now, what we spoke about is you've built confidence through that, through strength. Now you can do double leg. And you can trial this, and of course, like, if you, you try it for a couple of reps, if you still get pain, then ultimately you're, you weren't ready to try that yet, and that's absolutely fine. Regress back. And remember, almost look at the, them as like, you've got to do the isometric static hold first, get strong at that, tick, earn the right to progress onto eccentric loading. Milk and rinse out eccentric loading for as long as you possibly can. Okay, at this point, the joint should be pretty much getting like back to full health. Then we try concentric double leg. You may have to try it in the beginning that your stronger leg is actually still taking over a little bit, but you're still managing to concentrically track, um, press the load back up. 
but it's not taking the full brunt. If you said on a, on a leg extension, you've got 50-50 left, left leg, right leg, it might be like 70-30, but you want to build it back up to it being 50-50, and you're going to need the other leg support to do so. So that's another thing to consider. So the next tool we're going to use is the leg press. Now for this, again, starting off with a static hold, this is kind of mimicking a wall sit. So you, you could do this, you could do a wall sit, but this is loaded straight away, which is quite nice. So if your knee is really fucked, maybe regress this straight to a wall sit. Again, a good 10 seconds here. Just holding, keeping that uh, joint static. It's not changing in length. We can develop from this. Obviously, you lower down under control. Next, we've got eccentric loading. Now, again, remember that the left knee is the fuck knee here. So we're going to come down. Uh, sorry, th this is... So less less range, uh, as, as we spoke about before. Fix, fix the range before then moving on to the next phase. So yeah, this is in the event that like you could go so deep, you could shallowly not break through the full range and just hold into this position here. Okay. Now, this kind of looks like I'm pedaling a fucking bike or a car or whatever, but... What we want to look at here is one leg, your weaker leg, is going to take you down. So you're going to slowly come on the way down. But for this, you're not going to have your other leg dangling out the way. It's still going to be slightly supported. But then to come back up, you're going to drive through the strong leg, not the weaker leg. So this is how that's going to look. So you come down slow, 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 slow on the weak leg. Get the pause, drive back up with the strong leg. The, the, the weak leg didn't really do anything there. Down, 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 down. Get the pause and drive back up. So you're still getting strength through the other leg, but we're, we're just taking off the tension so we can do this here. Now what else you can do with a leg press is you can reduce the angle in which your knees are gonna bend. The lower your feet are, the more knee bend you're gonna get, and in normal circumstances, that is exactly what you want. The greater your knee bend you're gonna get, the more you can challenge the quads. Now with a leg press, Nearly always, unless it's a really well-built leg press, your, your hip joint will close up before your knee joint just because of the angle, which means your glutes will get, very, will get challenged very, very well. So it's a very gr good exercise. And also, if we don't have the angle so great, it means we can come down and put less stress through the joint. If you look here, I'm, I'm, I'm not even breaking 90 degrees here. So thinking about full range, we're working for a range that we can still manage relative to, to our injury. Always slow on the way down with the eccentric loading. And then we can progress to lowering our feet down. And you want to continue to do that anyway with your own proper training to till you can get your, your feet as low down as possible on the platform. Because remember, the goal eventually was to take our knee for a full range of motion. We can talk in, in later videos on how you would do that safely. But that, that's going to be the goal that we're going to look to do here. And again, back to using that double leg. Want to get to 50-50, but it might start 70-30, might start 80-20, and you're going to progress your way back up to that. So they're the, they're the exact exercises I would do. I do the leg extension and the leg press, starting off with isometric holds, eccentric loading, and then concentric, and then looking to do full range of motion. So just to finish off, a session prescription, which you can take away here is, so leg extension, static holds. Five times one minute. So you could break that up into 30 seconds if you need to, 20 seconds if you need to. But this is going to be a fair amount that you can put through here. It doesn't need to be heavy, but it does need to be time under tension getting that joint fixed. We've also got leg, uh, leg press, static hold, five times one minute. Leg extension, eccentric loading. So we progress from here. Eccentric loading, three times eight reps, five seconds lowering each time you do the movement. Same with the leg press, same repetitions. Now you're gonna do this two to three times a week for around about four weeks. And you're then gonna test. You're, so you're gonna press at the start, ow, fuck, pain. You're gonna try this now for four weeks. Then you're gonna test again at the end to, to measure how, how much pain, I know you're kind of measuring off a pain threshold, which is it's fairly subjective, I do agree. But you'll know if your joint is fixed or not because you either get pain or you don't. And if you, if you still get pain, then you just need to revert back to these two exercises, continue to develop and progressively overload these exercises. So what would this mean here? It would mean more load, or let's say you've maxed out to the top of the range, it would then mean more load at that range. If you're not at the top of the range yet, you're gonna work your way up until you are. That more range of motion would be a progressive overload stimulus as well. 
You're going to max out the eccentric loading, always on five seconds. If you can't do five seconds on the lowest of weight, fine, do three, but at least, at least three. And then continue to progressively overload the weight on the stack there. And then, again, try again after four weeks. If you're now back in, beautiful. Then go into the uh, concentric movement where we're trying to develop back to that 50-50 balance. Once, once you're sweet, you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm pressing again, pain-free, no problems. Then we're looking, okay, what movements can we get full range of motion? Well, we could now smith, uh, switch, switch over to maybe a hack squat where we can support all of our back, but we can get full knee flexion. Or we use a smith machine where we can lean back against the smith machine, come all the way down, get full uh, knee flexion there as well which is essentially means the knee joint fully bends. If you ever hear the term flexion, the knee is fully bending. If you hear extension, the knee is straightening back out. So that is everything I have for you inside this package to fix your knees. I hope you found it useful. If you do, try it. Let me know how you get on. Message me personally. Message on the group um, and let me know what you think of this. So, boys, I hope to see you with fucking robust knees. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.